Beautiful view. And this is Fulton Landing. This is where George Washington and his troops got away after the Battle of Brooklyn after being routed. But Gabriel Furnham was the original Brooklyn writer, other than a few Dutch writers, back when the Dutch had New York City. Gabriel was born here. His father was one of the was the first judge of Brooklyn Kings County. And Gabriel, by the age of 24, had written the entire history of Kings County. The Prodigy, brilliant. And then the cholera outbreaks that hit in the early 1800s. One of the treatments was opium with bitters. And poor Gabriel got hooked on opium. Ended up dying in a boarding house next to the prison that his father had built. Sad story, but Gabriel Foreman, Furman, one of the first kids actually born in the brand new county of Kings County, Brooklyn, and died here, too young. Here once stood 7 Middaw Street. This was a wild bunch. Late 30s, early 40s. Carson McCullers, W.H. Auden, let's call her a burlesque dancer, stripper, Gypsy Rose Lee, musicians, great talent. They all came together to live under this roof. W.H. Auden kind of kept the sanity in the house. He was gay and uh, this house was a little wild. McCullough, McCullers and uh, Rose Lee drank heavily. Um, McCullers had just finished The Heart is a Lonely Hunter and that was getting published. This house was knocked down to make way for the BQE. A big loss and a strange gathering of minds. So who was Walt Whitman? Walt Whitman was the, the great poet and author of Leaves of Grass. Uh, one of the most renowned poets this country's ever produced, I would guess. Uh, born in Long Island, but spent many years of his life right here in Brooklyn. Right around here in downtown Brooklyn, as a matter of fact. Spent some of his childhood uh, down here. His father was a contractor. He built a lot of different houses around downtown Brooklyn and he moved around a lot. Pretty good editor too, huh? <laughs> he was a pretty good editor. He edited uh, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle for just under two years, I think, in the late 1840s. about a dozen different newspapers around the city, I think, in Manhattan and here as an editor and a writer. But isn't Brooklyn itself like one of the top ten if it was a standalone? It, it would have been like, it would be like fourth biggest or something if it was a standalone city, but it was always a cheaper way to live in New York than living in Manhattan, when you're still in the city and surrounded by lots of other creative people. I think that's always been a draw for Brooklyn or why writers and creative people want to be in Brooklyn. Thanks a lot, Phoebe. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Go Eagle. Good paper, one of the oldest in America. It is. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and Stuart seems to like you. Good boy. 70 Willow, Brooklyn Heights. Truman Capote lived here. Basement apartment, but deceptively huge. Lived here in the 50s and finished in cold blood on this spot. Never finished anything after that drinking very heavily, but one of the real notorious characters of this area. The northern part of Brooklyn Heights was more dock workers and more of a rowdier bunch. And here you had the beautiful, poetic Truman Capote. Rest in peace. Norman Mailer. One of the great writers and losses here. We lost him two years ago. What a personality. Started the Village Voice. A great family of artists. I won't give the address because his beautiful widow, Norris Churchmailer, who's a fine writer on her own, still lives here. Finished her memoirs of her time with Norman. Great loss. Great personality. They don't make him like that. Thanks, Norman. This is for you, brother.
great Brooklyn publisher, Akashic. A fabulous book. Nice guy, too. So how many books do you hope to sell today? About 5,000. What's your fastest selling book right now? That, that's what we hope to sell. Our right. fastest selling book right now is, uh, is probably, I don't know, we've only sold about four books so far. This thing just started. Yeah. This is a long day, fact, man. It's been three minutes. We sold a copy of Places in Between by Rory Stewart. Did you sell any Brad Lockwood? Um, yeah, only uh, six of those nice. in the past three minutes. Thanks, man. It's very serious. This guy looks like your bodyguard. He is. My bodyguards all wear yellow hats that say Provence <laughs> thing. 40 veranda place, basement apartment. Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn. This is where Thomas Wolfe wrote Only the Dead Know Brooklyn. Short story of a local Brooklynite watching a tourist walk around with a map reflecting on how he deserves to get bopped over the head. Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe lived here. Uh, this is Grace Court. Beautiful home. Great location. And they later moved down to Willow. Also sold a house to W.E.B. Du Bois. The fear back then was communists. Arthur Miller, great patriot, refused to name names during the Red Scare, McCarthy, scumbags, too familiar to today, H.P. Lovecraft, the Necronomicon was created here. This is Clinton Street, and this is where gothic horror took on a new life. A weird guy, H.P. was broke, his wife had left him, so he started writing really dark short stories, and canned beans, and so much sugar in his coffee. He died of a weird ailment when he was way too young up in Rhode Island. But New York gave him metal. Evil Dead all the way. So why do we do it? Why do we come here and pay too much rent? Struggle, starve, hoping to finish a book? Some say Brooklyn's light helps. I always found that Brooklyn It was five to 10 degrees cooler than Manhattan. And then if you look at the long history of this borough, Brooklyn was once cheap. But a lot of the story behind being a writer in New York is you move here to write a book, like I did. You finish it, and then you get the hell out. But Brooklyn's different. And I hope it stays different. Gentrifying rapidly. Keep those rents low so artists can actually come here and work and afford it and live. Or they're all going to move to Jersey. Thanks. Right, right. No one ever seems to hear the seismic thunder of the L just above New Utrecht Avenue. Theirs is the stoicism of all the black-dressed widows, gnarling through their rosaries on the front street chairs, as if the rest of Brooklyn and the city had long gone to hell around them, never touching their Sunday. 